Find the area of the surface, z equals square root of x squared plus y squared over the unit disk. First, I square both sides, gives me z squared equals x squared plus y squared. That's the formula for a right circular cone. Next, formula for integration. So, we're going to have, take the integral over the unit disk in the plane, okay, against square root 1 plus partial z partial x squared plus partial z partial y squared. Then that's against dA. That's going to be the element of area in the plane. Let's calculate the partials. So we have z equals, okay, it's going to be x squared plus y squared to the 1 half. So we're going to need to do chain rule with partial derivatives. So with respect to x, the half comes down. Okay, leave the inside, take one off the exponent, makes it minus a half. Derivative of the inside with respect to x is going to give me a 2x. So x is the variable, y is treated as a constant. So I clean it up, I get x over square root of x squared plus y squared. Same idea, partial z with respect to y, we get y over square root of x squared plus y squared. Now, we put them into our formula. What happens? So on the inside of that square root, we're going to have 1 plus x squared plus y squared over x squared plus y squared. So it's going to give me a 2. Okay, our square root turns into square root of 2. We can bring that out of the integral. And we're left just integrating, okay, integrating over the unit disk against the element of area for the plane. So what comes out is just going to be the area of the unit disk, which is going to be pi. We could just work that out in polar coordinates. So what would you need to do there? Okay, well, for the unit disk, okay, what are your limits going to be? The radius is going to go from 0 to 1, and then the angle theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. So once you have that, you also need how do you change okay, your dx dy. That's going to go to r dr d theta, and now you can go ahead and work. So we calculate this. Okay, take the antiderivative of r, gives you 1 half r squared. Put in your 1 and 0, take their difference. That gives you a 1 half. Then you need to take the integral d theta. Theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. So it's just going to be d theta goes to theta. So it's 2 pi minus 0 or 2 pi. So you're left with 1 half, 2 pi, and then your original square root of 2 gives you square root of 2 over pi. Your check, okay, well, we have a right circular cone. Okay, the radius of the base is 1, the height is 1. The area formula for a right circular cone is just going to be pi times r times square root of r squared plus h squared. So it's going to be pi times the square root of 2. A quick look at the formula. So why the square root? Let's draw the picture. So I'll put my surface in 3 space. We're going to take a tiny rectangle in the xy plane. One side will be delta x, the other side will be delta y. Each side will be parallel to the corresponding axis. Now, I want to see what happens when we take a rectangle in the plane, push it up to the rectangle on the surface. So it's going to warp. And the idea is going to be I'm going to want to approximate this not with a rectangle, but with a parallelogram. So the idea is we're going to take the vectors that go with the partials going in the x and y direction. Okay, they'll be tilted. So if we take parallelogram formed by those vectors, we get a parallelogram, and then I just find the area of the parallelogram. First, what about those vectors? So for instance, if I'm trying to find the vector that goes in the x direction, okay, that's going to be associated to the partial of z with respect to x. So what happens? Think of it this way. All right, if I go over by x, okay, change in x is going to lead to a change in z. So I want the vector that's going along the hypotenuse. So that vector, assuming we're up against the xz plane, is going to be delta x, 0, delta z. If I factor out a delta x, I'm going to have 1, 0, delta z over delta x times delta x. I let delta x run down to 0. What's going to happen? Then we're going to have 1, 0, partial z, partial x, and then that delta x on the outside will change to a dx, assuming we're doing some sort of limit process for integration. All right, 
run through the similar trick for the y variable. What comes out of there, well now, now you'll be in the yz plane. So you'll have zero, delta y, delta z, and then you divide through, take your limit, that gives you the vector zero, one, partial z, partial y, and then a dy on the outside. So we can take the dx and the dy, set them aside. That's gonna be what you would integrate over. We're more interested in getting the area of the parallelogram that goes with these two vectors here. Now, to get the area of that parallelogram, we're just gonna use the cross product, take its length. So if I have a parallelogram in three space, I get its area by taking the cross product, and then I just find the length of what comes out. So we load our vectors into our cross product matrix, and then I just do our little crisscross business. When I do that, what comes out? So from this one, we're gonna get a minus partial z partial xi. From this one, we're gonna get partial z partial y, j, but picks up a minus sign. And then for the k, we're just gonna pick up a one. So that's my vector. Now, if I take its length, we're just gonna take some of the squares, square root, and then you notice that's gonna give you the thing you're trying to integrate. 